Hey everyone, thanks for your time. It was a quiet week until the end when news broke that Boeing was giving notice of a potential and substantial layoff of its SLS workforce. I was putting together the regular weekly review of news, but this news came with little in the way of details or clarity. And given the ambiguity, it overshadows current plans and it could do more than that. So I'll push that video back a little bit and in this shorter video, I'll focus on what was basically a late Friday news dump. Even with potential layoffs still two months away, without any clarity being provided, this happens at the same time of growing rumors that SLS and the plans for NASA astronauts to fly to the moon in this decade are in jeopardy. So the implications are big. Relatively late in the workday on Friday, February 7th, news broke online about layoff notifications for the Boeing SLS workforce. Boeing is the prime contractor for the SLS core stage and exploration upper stage. Via their communications team, Boeing provided this statement confirming that, quote, to align with revisions to the Artemis program and cost expectations, today we informed our Space Launch Systems team of the potential for approximately 400 fewer positions by April 2025. This will require 60-day notices of involuntary layoff be issued to impacted employees in coming weeks, in accordance with the Worker Adjustment and Retraining Notification Act. We are working with our customer and seeking opportunities to redeploy employees across our company to minimize job losses and retain our talented teammates." Unquote. The initial reports I saw were on Reddit, but Jeff Faust's story on Space News credited Bloomberg with the first reporting, and Ars Technica published a story by Eric Berger shortly thereafter with the same Boeing statement and additional reporting about internal White House discussions about the future of SLS. There are links to those stories in the video description. As the Boeing statement says, it is following the WARN Act to provide at least 60 days of notice, so layoffs would not be until early April. But the statement starts with the note about, quote, revisions to the Artemis program, unquote, so this could be the first indirect notice of not just the Trump administration intent to terminate SLS, but also could be broader than that. However, none of that is confirmed at this time because nobody's saying anything. When compared with the other prime SLS contractors, Boeing's agreements with NASA are much shorter term. Although there are options to build SLS vehicles beyond the one for Artemis IV, and there are contracts to procure parts and materials for them, NASA and Boeing have not finalized terms beyond that. As I noted in a video at the end of last May, the intent was to move production of SLS vehicles, beginning with Artemis V, to a commercialized contract called the Exploration Production and Operations Contract, or EPOC, that would have been sole sourced to a joint venture between Boeing and Northrop Grumman, who is the prime contractor for the SLS boosters. That had been planned to go into effect at the end of 2023, but that never happened. NASA has separate contracts in place with the other SLS Prime contractors. The booster production and operations contract with Northrop Grumman covers production of SLS boosters through Artemis 9, including development of upgraded solid rocket boosters. NASA has a contract with L3 Harris for production of 24 new RS-25 engines through the 10th SLS vehicle. However, as I have noted in previous videos, the contracts with Boeing to complete production of core stage and exploration upper stage units beyond Artemis IV are not finalized. The original SLS stages contract was modified to add production of the first EUS unit to the now completed production of core stage 1 and core stage 2. This was back when the plan was to fly EUS on the second SLS launch. The current contract, the Stages Production and Evolution Contract, or SPEC, only covers full production of the third and fourth core stage units. It was finalized in late 2022 when NASA was anticipating consolidating all of the SLS contracts and the significant amount of work that the space agency provides above and beyond that into the commercialized contract, or EPOC but NASA has declined to provide any details or clarification about the status of EPOC negotiations in the two years since then, and by the end of last year, 2024, NASA was said to only be studying EPOC. Any coincidence, a couple of hours after this news broke, pictures of the Core Stage 5 engine section barrel were published on NASA's images website. 
The completed barrel was lifted out of the vertical weld center at Michoud Assembly Facility in New Orleans in mid-December, so that work is several weeks in the past. That work was also completed as a part of undefinitized contract actions added to the existing core stage spec contract. While some production work like this was already paid for and completed for a fifth unit, it is a small fraction of the work necessary to build a full stage. This engine section barrel and possibly the thrust structure for the engine section could be under contract, so to speak, but it's unclear how much else is. They are the very beginnings of a build, a couple of its long lead items. Similarly, for exploration upper stage work, there are options that could be exercised for production of units for Artemis 5 and beyond, but we haven't seen any announcement of agreements to fully build any more. So right now, NASA may have bought a lot of the raw materials and parts for the Artemis 5 SLS vehicle, but as most of us know, the labor costs to put something together and make sure it works before it's delivered are often higher. So to summarize, other major SLS elements have contracts that cover the parts and labor for their pieces of the rocket through Artemis 9 or 10, so they are covered whether NASA transitions to a commercialized contract model or not. Boeing still does not have both parts and labor under contract after Artemis 4, and that commercialized contract has not materialized. The Boeing statement indicates that they are looking to redeploy their affected workforce as much as they can, perhaps during the 60-day period between notification and an actual layoff. This would be a substantial turnover of the workforce if all the layoffs were necessary, but it could be disruptive to Boeing's SLS operations during these next 60 days regardless. Even in the hypothetical where these 400 positions weren't eliminated, or longer term if there were layoffs and then positions were reinstated sometime in the future with new hires. Above and beyond production of the core stage units for Artemis 3 and 4, Boeing is also working to finish development of exploration upper stage for Artemis 4, including assembly of a structural test article and the first flight article. I have heard the possibility that this action by Boeing may have been done in part because contract negotiations with NASA are not complete. If Boeing and NASA are 60 days away from a contract deadline, then the Warren Act notices would need to go out. And there was no direct or public announcement of the intent by the Trump administration or Doge itself to terminate SLS, not yet. I asked NASA Public Affairs for comment about this Friday afternoon after the news broke. The Space Agency's statement arrived while I was recording this on Saturday morning, February 8th. It says, quote, NASA's SLS, Space Launch System Rocket, is an essential component of the agency's Artemis campaign. NASA and its industry partners continuously work together to evaluate and align budget, resources, contractor performance, and schedules to execute mission requirements efficiently, safely, and successfully in support of NASA's Moon to Mars goals and objectives. NASA defers to its industry contractors for more information regarding their workforces." Unquote. The absence of any clarification isn't definitive, but it's still telling, especially given the circumstances. If this warn notice was a precaution, no one said so in public. And if reassurances were provided in private, it's hard to tell if this public statement is doing that. When I asked Boeing and Northrop Grumman about Epoch negotiations last year, they deferred to NASA. And now NASA is deferring to speak to the contract situation. Allowing some of Boeing's work agreements to lapse would align with rumors that began shortly after President Trump was re-elected in early November that the new administration wants to terminate SLS and maybe more of Artemis. In terms of broader impacts if that were to come about, Significant parts of the Exploration Ground Systems program at Kennedy Space Center are also directly tied to SLS and would be affected by its cancellation. If the President and Congress collectively agree to immediately cancel Artemis missions using SLS, such as Artemis 2 and 3, then the chances of any crewed Artemis missions to the Moon in this decade would diminish significantly. If other Artemis elements like Orion were retained, it will take several years and additional government funding to integrate it with another launch vehicle. SpaceX plans to crew rate Starship, but development is currently focused first on rapid reuse and then on Earth orbit refueling. 
Lunar rating Starship, so to speak, could run out to 2028, which was the last official NASA forecast, or it could be longer than that. In terms of additional government funding, don't forget that some or all of the other SLS contracts NASA has with Northrop Grumman, L3 Harris, and others like Glidos for the Universal Stage Adapter would have to be bought out. So any savings from canceling SLS won't necessarily happen until after all the termination costs are covered by the government. So if President Trump and Elon Musk are ready to kill SLS, they may already anticipate that crewed NASA missions to the moon won't happen until after Trump's second term is over. That's now a little less than four years from now, which isn't much time given the delays to all the Artemis programs, not only the government taxpayer ones, but also the commercially funded and privately developed ones. As has also been noted though, the moon may no longer be in Trump or Musk's plans today anyway. At the very least, this announcement and relative lack of public acknowledgement isn't discouraging anyone from the possibility that the Trump administration is pursuing the options to terminate SLS. It also keeps the possibility of a full reset of Artemis from the moon to Mars front and center. What isn't so clear is whether any members or delegations in Congress would oppose termination of SLS or a broader set of cancellations. For what it's worth, Boeing reassigned SLS workers last year with little comment from members of the previous Congress. Thanks as always for watching. Click on the like button if you found this video informative. While this breaking news overshadowed the slow Artemis news feed from this past week, NASA, Boeing, and the other Artemis contractors are still continuing to prepare for Artemis 2, 3, and 4. So while we wait for some clarification on what this Boeing layoff notification signifies, I'll continue to report on those plans and preparations.